gonna bring home the good news to cure my sweet baby's blues. After I graduated college, my first job was working as a probation officer in Charleston. However, my first love was writing, and I was totally into sports and hoped to be a journalist on a big metropolitan newspaper someday. An inmate by the name of Stanley Jensen had written some sports articles that were published by the Charleston newspaper. And I was very impressed with his prose and sense of humor. I corresponded with him, and he wrote me several letters. I had no idea about the details of his criminal record, but I felt it was immaterial to our relationship. The state prison in Moundsville was an ominous stone structure built in 1866. I was going to the northern part of the state for the annual Marshall Ohio University football game later in the afternoon, so I was decked out in my game attire. Here's your file. Thank you. I arranged for a visit with Stan and was surprised when I saw in his file that he had been incarcerated there for a total of 25 years. 13 years for his first imprisonment, and then an additional 12 years after being free for only two years. Jensen, let's go. You have visitors. The guard pointed to the old gallows and reminded me that they hung prisoners until 20 years ago. Because of my law enforcement status, I was being taken to the attorney's interview room. I was a little nervous. My job had taken me inside many jails but never anything as ominous and oppressive as the Alamo, which I had only heard some of my clients refer to Moundsville itself. I had bought Stan a Marshall cap, which had been approved by the guard, and waited patiently. So, I got a visitor, right, Joe? Yes, you did. Did they say who it was? They told me, but I can't remember the name. Oh, I remember who it is now. I saw his massive shadow in the corridor as he approached the interview room. Stanley? Hey, Mr. buddy. Mr. Lilly, how are you? That's right, man. How it's, you doing? It's so good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Sure has been a long time. Got you a present, buddy. <laughs> I was astounded by his size and remarkable physical condition for a man in his mid-60s. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Sure is good to be up here and have you up here and visit with us. Well, it's good to see you. I'm... Sit down. Let's talk sports with a voice. Yeah. <laughs> so how are they treating you in here? How are they treating me in here? Yeah. Not very well, but I got a long time to go. Maybe they'll learn how before I get out. He told me that he played basketball at a small college in the southern part of the state in the late 40s. The guy was just brilliant. He knew everything about sports, particularly the history of anything connected with our home state, from Hal Greer to Jerry West. I have never had a more enlightening discord with any fellow sports fan. He had a photographic memory and tremendous verbal skills. I was so blown away by his intellect that I had little time to reflect on how sad it was that this brilliant mind was inside the Alamo. We had laughed and talked for over an hour when the guard told us that our time was almost up. All right, guys, we've got 15 more minutes. It 
had been a very entertaining conversation, but I was curious. I pondered asking him the question until the other attorneys left the room. He appeared a little uncomfortable, but I had gained a certain amount of trust. He told me he was a teacher and a basketball coach in a small town where he went to college. He had been married to his college sweetheart for almost 20 years. When he was 42 years old, Stan came home from school one day and found her in bed with their postman. He calmly said that he blacked out by rage and blew them both away. Sorry, Stan. Um, I'm just curious. I noticed on your docket that you left prison after 13 years, only to return two years later. What happened? How long you been in the crib? About a week. Who was you? Alamo? Oh, man, I ain't never been that big time. Down Mount all. <laughs> 90 day observation. Ain't it a bitch? Yeah, man. You know what? I can do a bullet standing on my hand. But I go before the man. He laid 90 on me. I pretended to faint. <laughs> you know, shit. Then I end up in court, man. Motherfucker let you slide? And skate on to the crib. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> man, I sure hope I get me a young white woman P.O., man. You know, hey, white lady P.O. Hey, I get this Johnson so hard, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I just don't want to get me one of those pinty, pinty purple motherfuckers. You know how some of those brothers are, they get a little education and they go on some righteous, self-righteous trip, you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean, mm. man. Hey, pal, you can move ahead now. A lady is waiting. Do you want some of this food? You get some of this, man. You can't get none of this. Whoa, 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 Paul. Student, Alan. Shit, in 187? Why didn't you say that, man? After you. After you. That's right. Alan? Yes, ma'am. Okay, now that was uh, 10 on Blue Velvet in the fourth. And then baseball dance hooly with Snake Charmer and Honey's Policy in that ninth exacta. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You take care, Charlie, and we'll get together for that uh, termination conference in the next few weeks. Okay. Goddamn Charlie came in here on parole. Oh, well, you understand probably understand a lot of things after a dozen in the Alamo, eh, Stan? I can't call you Stan, right? Right. My name is Bert Mallory. Mr. Mallory, I want to... I know, Stan. Bert. This is today's parole. Everybody's on a first-name basis these days. Okay. Bert, I, I want to... expect one bit of trouble out of you. Let's see, I've got your record right here. Anybody who blows his old lady away can't be all that bad. Can't be all that bad? Well, you've never been arrested before. 
Usually crimes of passion are never repeated. Oh, excuse me. Valerie. Oh, hey, Joe. How you doing? Busted again. She was just 14. Joe, keep your mind off the junior highs, okay? No, no, I can't get you out of this one. Uh, we might be able to work some county time with the DA. Yeah, uh, Joe, just keep the goddamn thing in your pants, okay, dude? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll come down to county to see you. Yeah, okay, I, I gotta go, Joe. Goddamn flag wavers, they never give up. Okay, Stan, now where were we? Bert, I'm 53 years old. And I just got out of Moundsville and... Oh, oh, now I remember. So you see, Stan, I've got 80 cases. Most just like that. Habitual criminals. They give me a lot of trouble. That's why I don't see you being a problem. You're not a criminal. You just blew your old lady away. I need a job. So, go get a job. Here's the address of welfare. They'll see you through for a while. But I don't have any place to stay. Well, they'll help you out with that, too. Uh, excuse me. Mallory. Oh, uh, hi, Marlene. Just a sec, would you? Let me know when you get situated. Fuck, man, I, I was totally unemployable at my age. So, for the first time in my life, I started to drink. When the halfway house kicked me out, I was drunk and homeless for a long, long time. And I just wanted to die. Really. And I probably would have killed myself except for the fact that I was afraid I might miss a ball game. The sports love saved you, huh? A little, I guess. But I, uh, I drifted on down to the red light district and finally got a steady job in one of those old hotels on the west side. You know, as a night desk clerk. Welcome aboard, Stan. Here's your keys, and by the way, this key here fits the safe. We keep a loaded 38 in there. Thank you. Oh, Pete. Where's your comic book? Thanks, Stan. Eddie, you're raising for him. It's about damn time. They gave me an apartment upstairs. So I put down the bottle, started to live again. I had money in my pocket, Mike. And I had a good TV set so I could keep up with all my teens. But what happened? What happened? I'll tell you exactly what happened. One night, I was coming home from a baseball game. Across the street from the bus station on Summer Street, there's a bar called the Harem.
on the screen with ass and bolted in the silver street and held down a cab. Now she turns on me. She starts kicking and biting and scratching and wailing on me. But fortunately, she passed out in the process. But when she woke up, she was real blue, because she'd already fucked up another job and didn't have any place else to go. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, hi. That's how you get your rocks off, Grandpa. Uh, sorry, I guess you're not the type. Ah. Me. Your friend, the sheik. Ugh, don't tell me, I can guess. Bastard! Yeah, but I think he really got the worst end of it. And your heel is probably still buried in his testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked up another job. Fucked up every job I ever had, you know. You hungry? You you must be starving. You, you don't owe me anything. Let's get some breakfast, what do you say? Friend? This is uh, our. Uh, uh, Gail. Hiya, Gail. Can I have a smoke? Sure. I take it you don't like filters. I don't mind them. You have to suck too damn hard. Personally, I like to save all my sucking for later. Business, you understand. <laughs> all right, business. You ever been with a whore before? Ain't no biggie. Different strokes, you know. Different strokes? You know, sly in the family stone. Understand? Anyway, I've been doing it for a while. More coffee, okay? Mostly not in dumps like the harem. Says she was raised in a trailer up behind a truck stop in Bakersfield, where her mother worked as a waitress. Exchanged the sexual favors. God, what a life. That's how she ended up here in West Virginia, looking for her mother, who allegedly had some kin folks up around the Beckley area. I'd probably still be there if Fast Freddy hadn't come by. How old were you? Fourteen. Anyway, Freddy was a biker. Ran with the heathens out of Venice, you know that? Can't say that I do. Was it love at first sight? Nah. 
afraid he stopped with his partner for gas on the way to some heavy boogie down on the curb. You know, party, party, party. So I split with old F squared. You know, algebra. F times F, that's Freddy, F squared. <laughs> so anyway, after lots of boogie, reds, ass, booze, you name it. He took me back to Venice with him. Love? He loved me when he was loaded and had me propped up on his Harley. How long did it last? I believe five years. I was pregnant. So I square split for some other river boogie, some Colorado boogie with this junior high chick. Laid his hog down over round needles. <laughs> Laid what? Hmm. Wrecked his bike. Chick with him got wasted. And Freddy? I can't kill a snake in the desert, no way. He just got crippled. Couldn't walk. So fast Freddy became sidecar Fred overnight. <laughs> His friends were driving around like he was a fucking hero. <laughs> Started dealing reds right out of his sidecar. Real hero, you understand. <laughs> no, I loved him, but couldn't handle his ego no more. Decided then I've probably been giving it away too long. Well, what happened to the baby? Welfare took her. Yeah. Anywho, well, I hit the streets. Dago, Fresno, Hollywood. Good times, bad times. I used to have some real class. I used to work in all the big spots. Beverly Hilton, Vegas, Disneyland. Disneyland? Mm -hmm. Big money. Most people don't believe it. But hey, you gotta go somewhere, right? Hey, I didn't mean to lay all that shit on you at once. It's just, you know, I wanna level with you. You don't owe me anything. Tell me nice, Stan. I ain't had nobody treat me nice in a long, long time. Uh, let's go get you some shoes, what do you say? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get you back for this, Pop. The sweetest girl I've ever known With so much love to give my head is spinning days before she uh, moved in, she had asked me to take her with me to a baseball game up in Canoa City. You know that double-A team? Well, I did. <laughs> I'll tell you something. This goddamn girl is a real riot. I mean, a real riot. 
she was screaming and hollering and cussing at all the players. I mean, she held a fan. sudden, boom, somebody hit a loud foul ball up in the seats where we were sitting. And she up and grabbed that ball. And I'm going to tell you, that goddamn place went ballistic. I mean, bonkers, crazy nuts. Damnedest thing I ever seen. Gave me the best hug I ever remember. Why does she have to be so fucked up? Oh, what a fucking waste. Oh, boy. Just damage the goods. I figured you knew, you know. Some marks on my arm ain't from no Indian blood brother ritual, you understand? I knew. Well, no, I just never had the guts to succeed. You know something, Stan? You got a great setup at the hotel, being the night clerk and all. All those old men hanging at the bar. Setup? I mean, for pimping. Honey, trust me, I got a few good years left. It's easy. Make lots of money. And do lots of time. Nah, I can always spot the heat. Not me. Well, I'll teach ya. I really don't think I can handle the idea. What, me and me screwing other dudes? Stan, I love you. Everybody in my whole life has been a trick. You'll never be. I still don't know. Well, you'll learn. And that, Mike, is how we got started. I had the perfect job for her business interests. She conned me. I mean, she manipulated me into pimping for her. God, it's, 
It's like you guys were complete opposites. Way beyond that. Way beyond that. Save me a room. I gotta split to the harem and get my stuff. But what about the... Oh, he sleeps all day. Then I gotta get a prescription filled and do this trick out of UC. Yeah! Love you, Daddy. Daddy? <laughs> How did she score the correct change? <laughs> she, um, uh, she was doing some pharmacist up on the East End. She got a lot there. Okay, with this one, you take it only at bedtime. Only at... Uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> where was I? Uh, Mrs. Sanders? Oh, dear. Hi, Gail. Uh, this is really not a good time. I'm, I'm really busy. I don't, I don't have time for this. I, I'm trying to cut back. I can't, I, I can't do this. My, my wife is coming for, for lunch. She'll be here any minute. He hot. He threw all your shit in the trash out back. Asshole. Don't worry, we got it out. Oh, thanks, Jojo. It's upstairs in my room. You're an angel. <laughs> hey, uh, things look pretty slow. Oh, I know. I'm getting my hat first of the week. Where are you headed? I'm going to Wheeling. Some friend of Edna's up in a bar. I thought Edna... No, she got out of all that shit. She banged the DA or some <laughs> shit. No shit. <laughs> Is Shirley working? Oh, my God. The sheik fucked her up the same night he kicked you out. Asshole. I know. God. She's working some bar up in Malden now. Hey, I got me a man. Are you shitting me? What's he like? Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful oh, than a look. I'm one of those. <laughs> no, he's kind and gentle. Quiet, conservative. <laughs> Opposites attract. <gasps> Fuck off. <laughs> I remember last time you were in love. Uh, I still got my partials to prove it. She was doing a lot of weird dudes. She had this one that was a, a professor of library science over at the college. Fuck, man, he was in a wheelchair. <laughs> like, she had this innate sense of doing business, and her body language was absolutely incredible, always hustling. Dr. Barnett, Miss Reed is here to see you. Gail. Oh, you look great. How are you? Mm. Pretty good. How are you? Good to see you. Good 
What you tell me, Stan? I'd say you can't trust her worth a shit. My brother Russ, he got tied up with a goddamn hooker up in Sutton. Hell, it wasn't no time before the cunt had his car and gone. Goddamn 66 Riviera. I'd like to kill him. I ain't got nothing, Eddie. <laughs> she told him she was gonna make him some big money. Shit. Goddamn all leather interior. Just had the engine rebuilt. Makes me wanna fucking cry. They found it in nitro, all stripped out. Hell, he had to junk the damn thing. That ain't never gonna happen to me, by God. Goddamn stinking ass cunts. Boy's gotta watch yourself. Is that right? You fucking A, buddy. No way, baby. Just no fucking way. All right, Stan, how's that? Well, that's, that's fine, Eddie. Just fine, buddy. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Woo-wee, did I miss my baby. <laughs> oh, do I have a surprise for you. Right on. Hey, Pete, Pete, could you watch the desk for a few, please? Sure, Stan. Thanks, Pete. You're a doll. Oh, your friends is cute. <laughs> How things go today? Righteous. Did you see the sheet? No fucking way, Jack. Well, the cabbie dropped your gear off. Right on. Nothing yet. Let me show you right over here. <laughs> Ready? Your office, Mrs. Reed. Cool. <laughs> and the customer's entrance. Poor fucking out. Lots of plants. Boy. Oh, Stan, you're so beautiful. <laughs> nice, huh? Nice ain't the word. God, I love you. So she moved in. Yeah, we finally got the rest of her things from the brothel above the sheiks and wasn't much just a few sleazy dresses and some turquoise and silver, just a lot of that stuff for all that motorcycle crap. And gradually we were able to build her wardrobe up, up a little. A successful venture? Strangely enough, uh, we did work pretty good together. You see, the bedroom in my apartment had a separate interest, entrance to it. So if I was going to be around there while she was entertaining, well, I'd just go sleep on the couch. That, that must have been uh, pretty difficult to handle, man. Did she know anything about your past? At the time, no one really knew anything. I never saw my parole agent. He had me on mailers. And she was always talking about her life and had very little curiosity about mine. Hello? Hello? Hello. Oh, let's please, please speak to Stan Jensen. Hello? Stan, how's it going? Good. Sounds like you got things under control. Is she a sleepover or a live-in? Don't mean to be nosy, Stan. Just doing my job, you understand. Just calling to check up. Sorry I haven't been able to get by. Yeah, I know. Any cases of habitual criminals? You sure are sharp, Stan. I sure am sorry I haven't been able to see you since that first day. But obviously you got your act together, right? Good. Now, the reason I'm calling is uh, I've got a problem. You listening? Okay. How'd you like to get off parole a little early? About a year or so. Well, I'd love to. Sounds interesting, huh? Well, all you got to do is cover for me on Tuesday and Thursday afternoons between 3 and 5. I don't get it. Okay, Stan, I'll lay it out for you. On my daily report sheets, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put down that I'm spending four hours a week of intensive counseling with you.
I'm sure they might have great therapeutic talents, will be used helping a young lady in much distress. Marlene? Christ, you got a memory like an elephant, Stan. Now, probably nobody will even check this out, but just in case. You'll do it. Great, Stan. You won't regret this. Trouble? Nah, just some insurance guy. I don't know how he got my number. Stan, you really do it to me, you know that? I mean, this week, I can't explain it. You sure got your shit together. I mean, you don't bitch, you don't grab. You ain't never hit me one fucking time. And that's heavy duty, I understand. It's a heavy, heavy motherfucking duty, duty, duty. <laughs> Baby, I, I think we need a translator here. <laughs> right. Like at the UN. <laughs> Ready? Ready. Let's pretend like we got a translator in the middle. Like some burnout biker who's too old to boogie but still knows what's shaking. Okay, I'll be the biker, me, and you. Okay, you understand. Testing one, two, three, coming in. Loud and clear, loud and clear. Now, this chick ain't got her shit together. No kickback crib, no old man. Turning turkey tricks for greasy Arabs. And God's a bad Jones for stumps. Coming down. Black. Snuff wish. No, Miss Reed. Reed? R E E D. Miss Reed has experienced many years of psychological treatment and therapy in a variety of state institutions who have uniformly classified her as manic depressive. She has had no stability whatsoever in any kind of personal or family relationships. She's established her vocation as that of a prostitute, but is presently unemployed due to a conflict with her employer, who is of Lebanese extraction. She is hopelessly addicted to barbiturates of any kind. When she cannot procure these, legally or illegally, she becomes suicidal. Her attempts to terminate her life <clears throat> thus far have been unsuccessful. I swear killing myself goes through my head 50 times a minute. Why are you telling me this? Truth, man. I got to tell you all of it. Since yesterday, I wanted to tell you. You make me feel good, damn it. I don't want to con you. I want to love you, Stan. You understand? I need you. Getting back to your question. I, um, her being with other men did bother me a little bit at first. And she had this, um, this special way of hugging just only me. And I was the only one that shared her lips on my mouth. But it was all business, you understand? See, after the first couple of months, we were doing real well between my job and hers. And she was really into making that shit house into a real nice apartment with flowers and plants everywhere. Said so it was the first permanent home that she'd ever had. I, uh, the cab driver said that you... Ah, uh, 42.
66 Riviera. Leather inside. Took him for everything. Price then. <laughs> Here, you take one of your bags. Come on, let's go in the living room and have some coffee. What do you say? Christ, I thought... No, oh, no, no, Eddie. All business, Eddie. You understand. All business. <laughs> yes, sir, Reebok. Right in there. Diamonds. Well, come on, God damn it. God damn it's diamonds. The red ones. Clubs. See, Eddie? Play that nine on that nine? Sure, honey. Lay it down. God damn it. You ain't never won a damn game in your life. God damn stupid ass janitor. Man, this is ridiculous. We're playing for a buck a point. God damn it, Gail. What'd you do? Hide all the clubs? Ha! Diamonds! Cross your grave? Gee, Eddie, you're looking good tonight. Well, Gail, you ain't looking so bad yourself. I'm out. <laughs> Cheating ass son of <laughs> bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Some things happen. Stan, I think you're the only man I've ever known. I mean, past Freddy, I knew his ego, and the others as well. Man, things sure have been different these last months. Well, you still see them same. No way. I ain't even have a death wish, and I don't know how long. Well, what about those pills? Man, you know, they're just a crutch. It's like a diabetic with insulin. Like a junkie with heroin. Well, insulin were outlawed, then diabetics would be junkies. Oh, yeah, I don't worry about that. Do love them stumps. Still love them. More than me? More than me? Answer me, damn it. Man, I don't know. I just. I ain't fucking don't know. What you getting so pissed for? Christ, man. Dan, you never know me when I ain't been loaded. We weren't made to understand. No one on this fucking planet knows. Reds, Reds just get me by. Why? I don't know. I don't even give a rat's ass. You don't love me? Who gives a shit? 
I do. You knew I was fucked up. Yeah, but I didn't believe it, and I still don't. Stan, I do want to mean something. Prostitution, pills, profanity. Yeah, baby, everybody's got problems. You don't. How well do you know me? You never ask me about my past. Well, I don't care. You never cared. Stan. It must hurt. God, it must hurt. We gotta make it, Daddy. We just gotta fucking make yes, it. Yes, we must admit. Need the broken moon. believed in her. Something happened. Yeah, some fucking thing happened. <laughs> you remember Dr. Barnett in a wheelchair over, over to college? Well, Gail had asked him to help her and search for her mother, Lucille. He found her. She was in a state mental hospital in, in Weston. So we decided one weekend to drive up there so she could be reunited with Lucille. I had never seen Gail so naturally high. I mean, woof. Man, that was a long drive in those days. My grandparents lived near there. Yeah, about five, five and a half hours, Mike. See, there was no Interstate 79 then. No way. Well, we packed up our shit and headed north for the weekend. Yell did not eat any pills during the trip up, so she stayed excited and didn't go to sleep. You better slow down. I saw those before. Clearly, Lou was out of reds. My baby. Oh, oh. oh, Mama. What happened? Margie didn't really say. Margie's in Bakersfield? Yes, Mama. Oh, Margie's so nice. Hey. Be right back. Who's he? This is Stan, Mama. He's my old man. Where's Daddy? Don't you remember, Mama? He's in Texas. Is he a good man? The best. Mama, he's the best. My baby deserves the best. Are you happy? I've never been so happy. I'm so sick, precious. You'll get well, Mama. We're gonna get you out of here. And come to Charleston and live with us. Stan's in the hotel business. Oh, Mama, don't worry. I always worry, you know. I remember. Those days are gone. I'm making it. I am. Oh, you're so good, precious. You're so good. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that poor baby, when she cried and Cried and cried when she hugged her mother ever so tightly. Mike, I, I really don't think that Lucille was even capable of recognizing her own daughter or anyone else. Well, <laughs> well, the trip 
back to Charleston was a somber one, to say the least. You all right, honey? Get your hands off me, you son of a bitch. Cocksucker! I'm sorry, honey. <sighs> sorry, ha. Fucking ha, ha. You just don't get it. Ain't no goddamn difference. I'll tell you, buddy, this whore ain't dying in one of those dumps. Damn doctors. Not about Sutton. You know, pops open her purse and pulls out a bottle of the correct change. A full bottle. And she started to gobble them up. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, what, yeah, what the hell are you doing? Hey, get, give me them pills. Spit them pills out. Give me them pills, God damn it! Come on, bitch. I grabbed for him and she screamed. And she grabbed my hand and bit me and yelled, God damn it, that's me in there. I kept fighting, trying to get the pills from her. She kept fighting me off until she ain't damn near the whole bottle. Well, I lunged at her one more time. Gail, give me the pill. Ow! Ow, Gail! And then I lost control of the car. We went crashing through a bank and came to arrest her after we knocked over a goddamn dogwood tree. And listen, she was either knocked out or had passed out from the drugs. I don't know which. So I had to tell the state police it was an overdose as an ambulance sprinted with her lifeless body to the nearest hospital in Sutton. And before the tow truck could haul the Molly's car back to town, and before I could get back to the hospital, they had already pumped her stomach and she was out of danger. But the doctor on call at the hospital said that since it was attempted suicide, that she'd have to be transferred to Weston for a 72-hour observation. Where her mother was? I knew goddamn well she couldn't handle that. So late that night, I snuck into the hospital to the emergency entrance and kidnapped her. We caught a cab to the bus station and headed back for Charleston. She slept all the way back and another day after we got to the hotel. So she was okay then? Well, physically, yes. <coughs> Are you all right, honey? Gail? I'm sure you found everything satisfactory. Well, there are some things that uh, that I have some questions about. Now, uh, how is the uh, how's the Jensen case progressing? Oh, um, he's doing quite well. Uh, oh, we've uh, we've established a very good relationship. Now, obviously, the man has some deep-seated psychological problems, but we're getting to the balance of it. I've been using some logical gestalt type techniques. Well, I know you spend a lot of time over there on Tuesday and, and Thursday afternoons, and I'm sure you're making some great progress with him. Uh, 
I think it would be a good idea if we could get Mr. Jensen in the office next week so that I could see firsthand how your conferences are going with the man. Oh, uh, he, he works very hard. It's, it's very difficult for him to get here. That's why I have to go out there. I see. Well, listen, Bert. Let's have Jensen in this office next week. Okay? Morning, Stanley. How was your trip? Uh-oh. Don't say I didn't warn you. She's a whore, Stan. this to her, will you please? Sure, Stan. Sure. Thank you. Hey, Pete, do me a favor. Miguel, it, it, it's Pete. Not working. Stand bottle. Here, you fucking cripple. I'm sorry, Gil. Pipeline to the good time. How much? I'll sell you five for fifteen. Oh, hold on. Come on with you. Shoot that good red. From the line, I'm dying. Thanks. Hey, you know, you're good looking, but you ain't looking too good. Guess what? The alley cats are on tonight. And I got pole chops and <gasps> shit!
Stan, you gotta get rid of her. Man, do yourself a favor. Call the Department of Mental Health. No, Eddie. They'd just have her committed. Yeah, good riddance, I say. Eddie, you just don't understand. The hell I don't. Stan, you gotta get her now before she takes you with her. Early the next morning, my, my friend Eddie, the barber downstairs, uh, he'd been arrested for drunk driving in St. Albans, so I rode a bus down there to bail him out. And of all the goddamn things that happened, this fucking parole agent of mine who was about ready to set me free, he came to the hotel. I'm Stan's parole officer. Yeah? Yes, Stan. He lives here, doesn't he? St. Albans, a friend of ours, got in some trouble. I'm Bert. What's your name? Gail. You live here? Maybe. Oh, sorry. Well, Gail, it's very important that I talk to Stan. What's wrong? Coffee? Yeah. I'm in a jam. This has got to do with Stan. He's on my uh, caseload, you know? You know Stan. He's cool. So, uh, we worked a deal. Deal? I needed Tuesday and Thursday afternoons. Anymore? Black's fine. So, I've been telling my boss... That you've been with Stan. Right. You're very intelligent. Look, Stan doesn't need any help. I don't know. He's together for sure. And crimes of passion are never repeated. Something wrong? I'm fine. So, I've got this conference early tomorrow morning with my supervisor. And Stan needs to be there. What happened to your hand? Will you tell Stan that I'll be here to pick him up early tomorrow? Gotta run. And then, Gail, 
tell some devious little man went to work. And she immediately called her friend, Dr. Barnett, to college, asked him to do a little research for you, understand? Dr. Barnett, please. Barnett speaking. Gail, how are you? A favor? Sure. Lift the cork out of the box. I'll go ran around. You try and drown our sorrow. Watch the sun go down. I know you are great. But the tear in your eyes. Clouds on the horizon. Trouble in our home. Joe, how'd you do? Okay. Oh, you did? That was nice. Thanks. Okay, so what's what? He what? The postman murder? <laughs> no, I never heard of it. Red dress? Uh-huh. No, no, I, I don't know. I, this is curious. A friend of mine knows him. Okay. Hey, thanks, Joe. Yeah, right. First is great. Yeah, I'll see you then. I love you too, sugar. Bye. Sweet for drinking. Here's to Here's to better days. Hi. I knew you'd be back. Uh, any more on what you got? What's in it for me? You gonna help me out or not, asshole? Oh, it's gonna be like that, huh? All right, give me 15. Okay, you see that up there? Motherfucker! some kind of a goddamn uniform. And they come staggering and stumbling right in through the door. And listen, I knew, I mean, I knew right away that this was not just another normal trip. Well, hello, Daddy-o. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. I don't want to go steady no more. This fucking guy was a postman, a freak. And they kept hugging and, 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 and kissing as they got on the elevator to go upstairs, the bitch. <laughs> and the center, watching that clock. I got to thinking. I got to thinking about all the coincidences of the situation. I, uh, I got to think about uh, up to 38, the owner, 
kept downstairs in the office in a safe. And I got to thinking, uh, I've got to keep my composure. I was thinking, well, hey, this is just another normal trick. You know what? I convinced myself of that fact. I got off at two, I went upstairs to the apartment and laid down on the couch, which was my usual procedure. Uh, lay close to that thin wall where I could hear all the sounds and the noises coming from the next room. Oh, baby, do it! Come on, baby, let's go! She was screaming with elisions and mm, orgasms and baby. sucking and thrashing with her lips and announcing very loudly, oh, baby, oh, you taste so, so good. Big. Oh, I, I'm so glad I found you. Oh, oh it's so good to have a real man instead of some lip dick motherfucker. Oh, she said, I, I want to I wanna go with you. Get with you at your place and shit like that. It went on for the next three and a half hours, goddammit, while I lay there and swept through my clothes listening to it. And nightmares about the first murders. Oh, but never, never once, not one time, were they ever Please. part of my conscious thought. Please, just end this motherfucker. I'll tell you something. This shit she pulled opened a long, closed and forgotten goddamn door. got up and I, I, I went downstairs to the office and I, I took that, that old 38 out of, out of the safe with a, with a, a box of cartridges and in, in, in a real daze. And then I, I went back upstairs to the apartment and laid down on the couch again. And then I, I listened to some more of her babbling diatribe. And that just threw more bait in the goddamn water. And then, God damn it. About, oh, somewhere around, must have been 5.30 or so, I, 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 I hear the door from the 
the bedroom open into the, in the hallway. So I put my ear right up next to my door where I can work it here. And I heard her saying goodbye to the fucking postman. I, I opened that door and I had a death grip on that pistol. And when I stepped into that hallway, she looked at me and she was all smiles. She said, boy, it's about fucking time. Bam! That first shot, that was a great change to all of her failures at suicide. Sorry, Mike. I'm sorry. Thanks for coming, buddy. Appreciate it. You take care of yourself, Stan. You too, pal. And God bless you. I didn't know it, but this was my first and last visit to Stanley Jensen. A couple of months later, I headed to California to pursue my dream of sports writing. We corresponded for a few years, never mentioning anything but our mutual love for sports. The warden wrote me a nice letter a few years later that Stan had passed away of natural causes. But I know I'll always have you Cause I've got the correct change. They buried him next to his first wife down round Bluefield. Correct change, correct change, correct change. Correct change. I'm gonna bring home the good news to cure my sweet baby's blues. Nothing 
when I met you and your show be empty when I'm gone It makes me so think of how my life would be going on without her I don't think I can take another sleepless night is driving me insane I just can't wait to hold her close and tell her how I love her so again i